asking you draws deeper because deep call it unto deep we're praying that Lord the depth of life that you want to take us to the depth of relationship you want to take us to we're asking that Lord you will help us to release ourselves and not limit ourselves so you can take us to that depth in Jesus name we're praying God that what we lack understanding you give us understanding pray that the entrance of your word we produce light, we produce wisdom, we produce understanding, and translate to desired maturity in our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. I want you to say to yourself, this is my month of thanksgiving. It's my month of miracle. And the Lord will make it so for you in Jesus' name. Quickly, we look at the subject, spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I read from verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Bible here talks about things that can only be revealed to the spiritual man. Talks about revelation for the spiritual man. And talks about how the natural man cannot receive deep things from God. It says, 
but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit. But for us to really understand where uh, of course, the word of God is coming from is by looking at verse 13. It says, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually the Son. How far you go, and I go in Christian journey, and how much we get accomplished within the period given to us depends on the extent of our growth in spiritual matters. Many things in life require maturity. Many things require, of course, spiritual discernment. Many Christians get themselves into all sorts of avoidable, I use the word avoidable, avoidable trouble by the way they talk, by the way they react to circumstances, by the way they make decisions, by the way they make decisions concerning their daily life, their career, family, perhaps even business. Second Peter 3, 18 says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 2 Peter 3, 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Here Peter is saying that we need to grow in grace. Peter is saying here that we need to know God more. And he's saying you need to know your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ more. And when you do that, it will certainly translate to spiritual maturity it is god's will for every christian to grow it is god's will for you and me to become more matured in the spiritual things that's why paul expecting more from the christians in the uh, corinthian church we see in first corinthians 3 verse 2 uh, to verse 3 he scolded them and said to them, I'm expecting more from you. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? You know, here said Paul said, I'm expecting, you know, better things from you as someone that has been in the Lord. I'm expecting spiritual maturity, spiritual discernment, tolerance. I'm expecting you, know, you to be able to flex your spiritual muscles when things happen. We're talking about spiritual maturity this morning. And I pray that God will speak to your heart. And teach you that which he wants to in Jesus' name. Turn with me to Psalm 74, verse 9. Psalm 74, verse 9. Here, David said, We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet, neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. How long? Praise the Lord. David was concerned, just as we should get concerned for the church of the living God. He said, we do not see our signs. The signs of spiritual maturity. The signs of spiritual discernment. The signs of spiritual insight. I should get concerned as a Christian or as a pastor if I do not see the signs of God, of spiritual maturity in me. So we see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. What's the job of a prophet? The prophet sees and declares the very mind of God. The prophet is not taken by, is not taken by surprise by anything that happens. 
But the prophet is able to see beyond the ordinary. The prophet is able to see beyond, you know, if, if, if a man, you're the husband in the house, you're the prophet, and you're supposed to be a prophet in that house. If you can't see beyond your children and plan their lives for them, then there's a problem. If the mother, who is supposed to be a prophetess, is not able to the son see beyond the children, then that mother cannot plan appropriately, guide appropriately. If we are children of God, God is expecting us to be more matured. If you have the spirit of God, I have a spirit of God in me. The Bible tells us in the word of God that the Holy Spirit is going to be there for us to guide us into all truth. Turn with me to John chapter 16, verse 13. How be it, actually verse 12, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you can't bear them now. God, Jesus said, you can't bear them now. You are just not spiritually mature to bear them. It's not meant for you. Verse 13, let's read together everybody. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will do what, everybody? He will show you things to come. And not only that, verse 14, everybody, he shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. May somebody glorify God here today. God is saying that when we grow in the things of God, you're going to get to experience the extraordinary. You're going to start to get things that are not meant for the ordinary. Because the Holy Spirit will actually take things that are in the mind of God for you, for your family, for the church, for people that you meet with, and declare that to you. And so you're not gambling, and so you're not guessing, but you are very specific. You're specifically speaking to people, this is what God wants you to do. You're not reading from Genesis, from the Genesis to Revelation, yet you can't pick out something for someone. You're downloading the Bible to, on someone. But what is God saying at a time for that individual? We, many of us, are operating at the level, the Word of God says this, praise God, the Word of God is already spoken and it's settled in heaven. God is going to, I know God is going to bless you. You should. If I come to you and tell you God is going to lift you up, tell me you already know God is going to, I already know God is going to lift me up. I don't need you to tell me. I mean, you can tell me, but I already know that. God said he's going to make me the head and not the tail. I already know that. God. Settled. But here is a situation, unique situation, that requires specific details, that requires specific instruction. Do this and do that, and you experience your breakthrough. If we are going to get to that level, we need to grow. We need to be more spiritually matured. And I am trusting God, you and me, we get to that level in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say, I will get to that level. And we all together will get to that level in Jesus' name. Please start with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? If so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. You will never know the things that are freely given to you. You, can, you may live through, through life, you may live as a pauper. If you don't come to know the things that belong to you, you may go through life and finish life, start as you live life as a beggar. If you don't get to know the inheritance given to you by God, you will operate under your potentials. You will never be able to reach beyond your family. 
You will never be able to reach beyond your generation. You will never be able to say Africa for Christ and say America for Christ if you don't connect with the deep things of God. And I am looking at people here, and I know the people looking at me are destiny makers here this morning. I say you're a destiny maker. God wants to make you people who change destiny, people who change lives, people who make things happen. Here, the word of God is saying that the deep things given by God can be given by God. Deep things are meant for people that go deep with God. It can never get to you. You will never get it except the Spirit of God takes it and gives it to you. And if God thinks that you're not spiritually matured, he's not going to give it to you. Perhaps he's going to look for somebody who is more spiritually matured and give it to that person. Perhaps he's going to wait for another generation and give it to that generation. But I'm praying that God will not pass this generation by. I'm praying that God will not pass us here by. Deeper Life Bible Church, Washington, D.C. is planted for a purpose. Do you know that we are here for a purpose? Do you know we're here in this city for a purpose? Do you know you cannot fulfill that purpose? And we cannot fulfill that purpose until we become spiritually matured. Until we begin to connect with grace from where grace is coming from. Until we begin to connect with life power from where power is coming from. Until we begin to connect with anointing from where anointing is coming from. God is calling you and me to connect with deep things. To connect with God. And when you connect with God, things will not remain the same. People will be running after you. Can somebody praise the Lord? I said, can somebody praise the Lord? So the question this morning is, what does spiritual maturity mean and what does it not mean? I look at the first point, unreliable measures of spiritual maturity. Unreliable measures of spiritual maturity. The second point that we're going to look at is undeniable measures of spiritual maturity. And lastly, we're going to look at unusual manifestations of spiritual maturity. First point is what, everybody? Thank you very much. You're listening. Unreliable measures of spiritual maturity. One of the unreliable measures of spiritual maturity is natural age. Natural age. Luke 2, 52, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Jesus increased in Luke 2, 52. Jesus increased, we're told, in wisdom and stature and in favor with who? With God and man. At the time that Jesus was increasing in wisdom and stature, there were the Pharisees. There were people who were much older than Jesus. But Jesus, as a little child, began to increase in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So one of the reliable measures of spiritual maturity is natural age. It does not come by how old you are. It does not come by, I'm 60 years old. Or perhaps, I'm of the age of Methuselah. God can choose a seven-year-old kid and turn the world around. God can use a 10 years old to turn the world around. You're 15, God can use you. You're 18, God can use you. You are just, you say, well, I'm just 20. God can use you. You say, I'm 25. God can use you. You say, I'm 70 and 9, 79. God can use you. So perhaps I'm 90 plus. God can use you. God can use me. Say that to yourself. God can use me. God can use me. God can use me. Another unreliable measure of spiritual maturity is physical appearance. You know, today we are carried away by how people dress and how they appear to us. We judge by what we see. But we've come, the Bible makes us to realize that physical appearance is an unreliable measure of spiritual maturity. It's not a matter of 
the physical appearance. Someone can look and sound spiritually mature. They can learn how to talk the talk. But can that individual walk the walk of faith? Can that individual take the walk of faith? Not just talk the talk of faith. 2 Timothy 3 verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. The Bible says, having a form of godliness, but doing what? But denying the what? The power of godliness, the power thereof. The Bible says, from such do what? Turn away. If somebody is always talking the talk, and when the tire hits the road, the person deserts you. When everything, the, everything set, the person is not there. When it seems like it's rocking and raging, and then think two times about that individual. Think two times about that person. If you have someone who calls himself a pastor, your pastor, and deserts you when you're going through things, or perhaps a son will do, call in the middle of the night, in the night of adversity, and the pastor perhaps had the opportunity to pick up and will not pick up. And the desires, determines, and decides to ignore that call. Then that person is not a shepherd. He's a hireling. I pray God will give us pastors after his heart. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Another unreliable measure of spiritual maturity is achievements. Everybody say achievements. Achievements. So some people are recognized by the kinds of organizations that they belong to. Some are recognized by how much degrees they have. Others are recognized by the diplomas that they have accrued to themselves. But you know that none of those things can translate to spiritual maturity. Achievements are not a sign of spiritual maturity. If achievements translate to spiritual maturity, Judas will make it. He was one of those sent out two by two, and they came back with a report that the, the devil was subject unto them. So that was an achievement right there. But you know, Judas, when it came to the reality, denied, betrayed Christ. If achievements mattered the most, then people like Peter, when, even when Jesus warned Peter, so when this and this happen, you're going to do what? You're going to deny me. And Peter bragged and Peter, hey, this over my, I think we'll say over my dead body. This is not going to happen and all this stuff. And when it really happened, you know what? He was what? Crying. So his achievements did not translate to spiritual maturity at that point in time. However, Jesus said, to him later, after you're converted, strengthen your brethren. I have prayed for you. Prayer matters a lot. Don't you never say prayer matters a lot. You know, people who don't pray, they will cry. They cry. They cry. Because things will happen to them and much is expected from, of them. But they are unable to deliver when much is expected of them. Another unreliable measure of spiritual maturity is period. Everybody say Period period in the kingdom, how long you've spent in the church, how long you have been in the kingdom of God. Like I said, I talked about Judas. Judas was with Christ for a long time, but that did not translate to maturity. Matthew 26 verse 40. Matthew chapter 26 verse 40. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them doing what? Asleep. And saith unto Peter, what? What? Or what? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Brother, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Your spirit may be willing. Your spirit may say, I'm a deeper life Bible church member, but your flesh can be weak. Brother, sister, watch and pray how you deal with the opposite sex. You may say, well, I'm spiritually matured, but you know what? You are still a man, you're still a natural woman, but you still need, you need to be cautious. Here Jesus came to disciples when it really mattered. 
Jesus says, disciples, you should be watching and praying. He came to them and he found them asleep when it mattered. Midnight hour. The hour of agony. When things were happening to him. He said, I expect you to be awake. But they could not. They could not be awake. They were asleep. Now you know when men are asleep, that's when their destiny gets shortchanged. When men are asleep, that's when they got swindled. We're here for prayer and fasting uh, on Saturday. And the, one of prayer po- the prayer point was on recovery. The resurrection power of God. And I remember the particular one I remember very well. Many things have a great moment yesterday. Great moment yesterday. Great moment yesterday. <laughs> you know, the, the woman that had a child, there were two women. One, they both had children. They were alone in that house. One slept over her child, but the other one, of course, the child was alive. The one that lost the child took the child of the living child and gave the dead child to that one and shortchanged the other woman of her own child. And that's what happened. It happened in the midnight time. When they were asleep, that's when the loss happened. When they were asleep, that's when the devil went around sowing tears. And maybe you've been asleep for so long, you will sleep no more in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God is looking for men that will be prayerful, who will take charge of their family. Where are the brothers? Where are the men? Where are the fathers in the house? Who will take charge of their family in the place of prayer and stand in the gap and say, God, salvation become it for this house, oh God. You know what? The woman was shortchanged. When it really mattered, gave her another child that was not her child. But thank God there was an advocate that you know, brought justice we have an advocate here today. So it's not a matter of how long you have been in a church and the titles that come as a result of the length of time in a church. You know, I was born in the church. I was raised in the church. No, 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 no. Spiritual maturity, it's an unreliable measure of spiritual maturity. Currently, are you in the faith? Currently, are you prayerful? Currently, are you doing the will of God for yourself, for your life? If you are not, then the history that you've got is actually history. It will not count for you when it matters. It won't count for you. Because the devil will sift you as wheat. And he desires to sift you as wheat. Somebody made a a comment uh, yesterday, and I really got that comment, and it really translated to a lot of sense to me. He said, you know, at times, you know, people think God goes around punishing people. He said the devil is subject to God. The devil knows the right from the wrong himself. He's falling short of God's glory. And so, even though he's falling short of God's glory, he's still subject to God. And God comes to us and tells us, my child, if you be willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. Be obedient. Listen to me. Do my will. You know, meditate upon my word. Let it dwell in your heart. Let it watch over you. But when you disobey God, The devil knows you've disobeyed God. You know what the devil does? (laughs) He deserts where God tells him to stay for that moment. And he goes, he says, eh, you disobeyed God. He quickly rushes there to inflict on that individual, to punish that individual. And God, of course, doesn't hinder that. You open, you break the hedge, the water, the what bite, the what stings, the serpent bites. The devil operates that way. He's a rebellious Christian. God, let me deal with him. Uh, but please, I respect you, God, but I must do my work. The devil must do his work. Inflicting the disobedient. Bringing punishment to people who are rebellious. You lied. You don't repent quickly. The devil is coming after you. You went into this and that. When nobody knew, the devil knows. No wonder he said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But you. 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 How old are you? I've been here since. The devil, uh, the devil has been from one generation to another. You think he's not smart? But God is saying, it's not how smart you are. The victory that you will have over the enemy is in obedience to God. Walking with God. And then he gives you victory over the adversary of your soul. And for somebody here today, God is going to give you every victory on every side in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 4.
Praise the Lord. I think I'm missing just uh, here. Paul said, uh, I'm of Apollos and ye not canal. Praise the Lord. If you get it before me, just let me know. The verse is four, to, four through six. First Corinthians 3. Thank you very much. Let's turn to First Corinthians 3. First Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 4. For while one said, I am of Paul, and another, I am of who? Apollos. Are ye not what? Canal. And verse 5, he says, who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. Verse 6, everybody together. I have planted Apollos watered, but who gave the increase? God gave the increase. So many Christians, you know, they fall into this, uh, you know, I'm this person, you know, this person is my favorite, and that person is my favorite. You know, God is, uh, he, I, you know, I, I don't want this person. God is, I want this person. I want this one preaching me. I don't want this one preaching me. They come to this selection. But, you know, if you believe in God and believe in his ministers, God has something to say to you through any man of God. That he has sent to you. There's always a word. Don't be carried away by the eloquence of such people. One may come very eloquent. The other may come and, you know, uh, you know, God. Uh, okay. But in the midst of that, listen. Don't you neighbor and say, listen. It might be one word that will hit you and hit you into your destiny that you get from that minister. So it's not a function of eloquence, it's not a function of how, you know, the dynamism of, of a preacher, but it's a function of the presence and the spirit of God. We look at point number two, undeniable measures of spiritual maturity. Undeniable measures of spiritual maturity. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. Please turn with me to Matthew 7, verse 16. Undeniable measures of spiritual maturity. The Bible says here, Ye shall know them by their... Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of, of thistles? Let's read together verse 17, everybody. Even so, every good tree, or tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth what? Evil fruit. Verse 18, A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth what? Good fruit. Let's read together like we are alive. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore by their fruits ye shall, ye shall know them. Everybody say character. No, and in person's character is one undeniable measure of that person's spiritual maturity, level of spiritual maturity. An individual's character is one undeniable measure. It's a big measure. And we're going to break that word character into several components. Character makes a difference. It's character that counts. D.L. Moody said, character is what you are in the dark. Character is what God knows about you. God says it's your character that determines who you are. Your character translates to what people summarize of you. Let's look at some of the components of character. The first one is demonstration of sensitivity to the needs of people. Undeniable measures of spiritual maturity, character, Broken down to demonstration of sensitivity to the needs of people. Where there's spiritual maturity, you're sensitive to the needs of people around you, your family, your friends, and on and on. You know, follow me as we read 1 John chapter 3, verse 17. 1 John chapter 3, verse 17. 
Bible says, Whoso had this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his boils of compassion from him. You say, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible is telling us here that if we are spiritually matured, one of the signs of spiritual maturity, an undeniable measure of spiritual maturity, is demonstration of sensitivity to the needs of people. A spiritually matured person is sensitive to the needs of people around him. A spiritually matured person understands that there may be around him or her people who are hurting, people who have needs, needs of clothing, needs of food, needs of finance, finance, various needs, needs of comfort, need of prayer, and the person is alive and sensitive to those needs. Spiritual maturity does not say, it's my way or the highway. If it's not my way, I don't care how people think and feel. And I don't care. I'm just going to do it my own way. That's not spiritual maturity. And spiritual maturity does not say, because it was not done my way, therefore I'm not going to cooperate. Therefore, I'm not going to flow. And at times, perhaps, it could be in the things we do in the family. Perhaps it could be with the things we even do. At times in the church, perhaps. I don't understand. I don't understand where the pastor is coming from. Oh, well, I don't understand why, I don't understand why we have somebody rhyming here, poetic rhyming. But you know what? To God be all the glory. It happened. It happened. Praise the Lord. So if you are laughing, I got you. Praise God. You know, sometimes uh, you're preaching someone. They say someone is about us, preaching about us and people and how, you know, it's always about people. There's always something you say, there's nothing you say that will never land on someone. Right? Can somebody say hallelujah? The Lord will help us. I say the Lord will help us. We are one in Jesus' name. In diversity, we can still be united. The so-called unity in diversity it may not be in my way, maybe not be my tongue, but if that person is glorifying God, if that person is praising God, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Can somebody say this morning, to God be the glory. And to him will be glory in this church in the mighty name of Jesus. A spiritually matured person displays love and concern for others. He does not show favoritism. He respects everyone. He is not snobbish. A spiritually matured person is not snobbish. Does not snob people. Youths, respect those who are older than you. Lay good foundations for yourself. At times, some of our children, you know, they're waiting for their grandparents to greet them before they even greet. <laughs> it's the other way around. Turn to your neighbor and say it's the other way around. It's the other way around. The culture in which we're in. Of course, when you go out there, you say, how are you? In fact, they, how are you? They say, how are you? Back to you. Some cultures, how are you? I'm fine, sir. But here, how are you? How are you? And I remember very well what, an experience I will never forget. Well, first or second year in this country, in, in college, and I got to elevator. There was a, a, a single mother who was a student. I was carrying a very little baby. That baby, I think, should be around two. And I turned to the baby and I said, how are you? And the baby looked at me and said, how are you? I just came from Africa. I'm like, what? Did I hear well? With boldness, how are you? This is where I'm coming from. I pinched the mouth. Praise the Lord. But God wants us to honor those who are older and in place of authority over us. That's the way to enjoy the goodness of God. That's the way to enjoy the benefits that God has for you in his word. May the Lord give us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Desires and defends peace. One of the undeniable measures of spiritual maturity is desire for peace and defense of peace. You will desire for peace between people. You will defend peace. You will not allow peace to go away. 
you will make sure you do things to unite people. You will not separate people. I say you will not separate people. You will be a builder in the name of Jesus. I will be a builder in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> I will not be a caterpillar. I can't hear or say it very well. I want you to say in the name of Jesus. In all circumstances, I will be a peacemaker. Jesus said in Matthew 5 verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. In fact, James, in James 4 verse 1, tells us from whence come wars. You know, we'll put it this way. From whence come divorce in, in families between husband and wife? From whence come acrimony between children and parents? From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts and war in your members. You can't control yourself. It must be my way and no other person's way. See, if they are not listening to me, nothing is going to work. No, you don't have that attitude. That's not a spirit, that's spiritual immaturity. But a spiritually mature man or woman will say, Well, they didn't listen to me now, but you know what? Maybe what I said is not relevant for this moment, but. Maybe in the five years to come, it might be relevant for the people. Maybe in two years to come, what I said that seemed not to be taken may be what will save. So at times we see in part. You don't see the big picture. And God is calling you and me to begin to see the big picture. I say God is calling you and me to begin to see big picture. The kingdom of God. Thy will be done on earth. As it's in, in heaven. Praise the Lord. James here is talking about conflicts and quarrels. He says that we fight because of our inner desires. They did not respect me the way they should. I heard of a minister of God who was introduced. And I, in quote, they said, we were introduced, in quote, okay? Uh, uh, Pastor uh, XYZ, he refused to come out. He said, they did not put all my titles they are supposed to add a bishop to that title. In fact, uh, they need to put a bishop, a doctor, uh, and so on and so forth. He refused to come out. He refused to, be, he refused to recognize that introduction until they put my real title, I am not coming out. It actually happened. I'm not going to come out. People are taking upon themselves the glory that belongs to God. The Lord is going to change things. I said the Lord is going to change things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You know, you will be a peacemaker, not a troublemaker. At times people engage in arguments and debates. At times, they, you know, it's like they stare at this pot and they will not give in. But the Bible is saying that when we attain spiritual maturity, you let God be. Let his glory be. It does not have to be my way. When we do that, we're going to save ourselves from greater conflicts. James said that this is where wars come. Haven't you heard of, uh, of churches where pastors are fighting over who stays on the pulpit? <laughs> one pulls the podium and the other says, no, it's, no, I'm the one. If you never had, I heard of it, it's real. It happened. I'm not giving you a story of what, here in this country, they were fighting over podium. But when did it get to that point? In our desires, untamed beasts within. May the Lord help us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11 says, And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to walk with your own hands as we commanded you. The Lord is saying to us, We should study to be quiet and do our own business and walk with our hands as we have been commanded. And Romans 12, 18 says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with some people, with all men. And I understand that you cannot always live at peace with everyone, but as long as the power is there in you, do everything possible. Put in your best effort. And if people have sworn not to be at peace with you, do your own part. And God will defend your cause in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Another undeniable measure of spiritual maturity is demonstration of positivity under pressure. Demonstration of positivity under pain. 
demonstration of positivity under plenty. You see, I've gone from the negative to the positive. Now, some people can demonstrate positivity when there's much, but when they are in lack, they are not positive anymore. It's like God has, the whole world has collapsed over them. And some people can demonstrate positivity when they, spread, when they are under pressure, but when they have plenty, they can't demonstrate uh, positivity. They look at sort of, uh, reference to our, of our text this morning on the side of scripture. We see Saul disobeyed God. It all started with disobedience to God and making an unlawful sacrifice. When he was under pressure, he wanted to please the people as opposed to pleasing God and holding on and just holding on. You, do you know holding on his inner man and inner spirit for that moment will have held on? He would have held on to the kingdom and power. Do you know holding on, you know, having control over your, lo- your lo- tongue and over having control over your, lo- your, your thoughts and having control over, you know, the raging inside, ho- having control, inner control, inner power, exercising authority over the inner man? We may not know what you're going through. There might be fightings and things going on within you, but you are able to hold on. You don't take it to your place of work. You don't go and slap your boss at your place of work. And then you, after that, you say, I'm sorry because <laughs> I, I had an issue with my wife at home. What would they do to you? You are fired already. It's your business. Let family business remain where? Let your inner business remain where? Fight your own battle. Keep yourself intact. Let God be your God. Have your victory within. So spiritual maturity is being able to tame yourself regardless of pressure, pain, or plenty. The Bible says that we should remember that we should count it all joy when we fall into various trials. You know, life is full of trials. The question is, do I have the right attitude as I approach the problems of life? Another undeniable measure of spiritual maturity is patience. Everybody say patience. A spiritually matured person is patient. James 1 4 says, But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And of course, if you read from verse 2, it says, But my brain count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Another undeniable measure of spiritual maturity is ceaseless prayer, delivering or delivering of ceaseless prayer. Paul tells us, you know, in First Thessalonians chapter five, verse seventeen, that when things are good, we should pray, and when things are bad, we should also do what. We should pray. He says, what? Pray without, pray without season. It doesn't matter what the circumstance may be. In all things, pray. And James said, hey, prayer warrior. Hey, sister, prayer machine. Pay attention to your inner life. He said, confess your faults one to another. Stop using prayer to cover up. Father, in the name of Jesus, and you go I, this and that. You offended the... Br- you offended somebody, and the Spirit of God is ministering to you. Just go and say, I am sorry. I didn't mean to do what I did. But you're still firing on your prayer. Heaven doors are closed against you already. You're firing on prayer. You have issues with your wife. You can't settle it. God said you will not get an answer. Your family will be stagnated. You're stagnating the destiny of your children. I am sorry. Everybody say, I am sorry. A simple word. Praise the Lord. And God lays it in my heart. Brandon, so I know you didn't feel good last Sunday. This is not part of a message. I mean, we disappointed you. And I am sorry for that. I am sorry for that. You were expecting much from us. But I pray the Lord will help us. And move us higher. In Jesus' name. That was not part of a message, but God just ministers to me in my heart. Can somebody say amen? amen? Prayer is talking to God, not playing. Prayer is praying to God and speaking to God, not complaining, not murmuring. Jesus came to the disciples and said, I expect you to be praying, not complaining, not asleep, not, you know what, 
not doing something else. Prayer is much more than complaining and murmuring and, and playing. It is talking to God. It is praising God. It's petitioning God and telling God, Lord, I acknowledge your sovereignty over my life. And you know, we thank the Lord. You know, last Friday we declared the beginning of a month of, month of what? Everybody, month of what? I praise God for you. Those of who are around, I praise God for you. And I can't even, I can't really talk about it. Let God have all his glory. You know, you just come this Friday. Come this Friday. Don't you ever say, come this Friday. One thing I can tell you is that God was in our midst from the beginning to the end. Through the prayer session, to the praise worship. And that's why it was so, because God was in our midst, he began to do an unusual thing in our midst. He began to move unprecedented. You have not seen anything yet. You will experience the glory of God in your life. This Friday, come. Turn to your neighbor and say, come. And experience God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When we look at Acts of the Apostles, we can record that many things happened. When you look at Acts of the Apostles, you see there were people who adored God. There was adoration. Do you know there was confession? There was thanksgiving. There was supplication. And all this was happening, and God acted in an, a, an unusual way. And we say Acts of the Apostles, he walked in, in a mighty way through the people, through the camp. He got things done. He got many things done. He was setting people free, captives free. And today, you know, when we pray to God today, when we cry to God today, something is going to begin to happen in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Another undeniable measure is demonstration of strength in weakness. You know, in Numbers 13, verse 28, Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Verse 29, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Verse 30, everybody? <laughs> We're not there. Praise the Lord. Numbers chapter 13, verse 28 to 31. Turn your Bible to Numbers chapter 13, as we seek to round up. Numbers 13, 28 to 31. If you're there, praise the Lord. Nevertheless, the people be strong, that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And somebody will say, ah, I can't make it in life anymore. Ah, I'm dead. Ah, it's just a slow death here. I can see death coming. I can see my destiny already truncated. Look at, the Anak Look at them. Look at the Amalekites. Look at the Hittites. Look at the Jebusites. Look at the Amorites. Look at how big they are. Look at their weapons. Look at the bleak future I have. Look at the hopelessness surrounding me. It seems like there's no way. But turn to your neighbor and say, there's a way where there's no way. God is going to make a way for somebody here. He will even make rivers in the desert for somebody here. God will surprise you. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is going to surprise you. This is our month of Thanksgiving. He will surprise you. We're talking about demonstrating strength in weakness. Verse 30, everybody, let's read together. Verse 30. And Caleb did what? Steal the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, uh, uh, <laughs> You're on your own, no? We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. They are not stronger than you in the mighty name of Jesus. Your enemies will not overcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. I am able to go up and take the country. And you will possess your possession in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Was it it, the situation with Paul? With, with Paul, he was going on one of his missionary uh, trips in Acts 27 verse 22. In fact, there was a ship, there was a storm on the sea. And everybody was giving up. It's like uh, they were even throwing, in, throwing away their belongings just to steal, you know, just for everything to be okay. You see, if God is not in that ship with you, you can throw away anything you, anything you want to throw away. <laughs> but I hope you don't throw away your children. Uh, uh, I hope you don't throw. I hope you keep your family and keep your family intact in prayers. I hope you keep your destiny in prayers. I hope you keep your church in prayers. Pastor, I hope you keep 
keep your members in prayer. No, don't give up. Don't give up. Because God has not given up on somebody here. He said, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. The sheep can go, but nobody's going to die. Nobody here is going to die. We will live to declare the good works of a most high God in the mighty name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You know, and that's why Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, began to recount the things that he is being through. He said, as spiritually mature people are people who demonstrate strength where there is weakness, where there is failure. They still demonstrate strength of character. Do you know the failure around you is not an excuse to deny God? The failure around you is not a reason to turn your back on God. The failure, every people may say there's a casting down. That's not an excuse for you to, to, to compromise your Christian walk with God. It's no reason, it's no reason. Because if you go before God, none of those things will account for you. God listens to no excuses and reasons. I have shed his, shed his blood. He has given everything that, that you need for your life and godliness. No, no, no. In fact, Paul said here that are they, in 2 Corinthians eleven twenty three 23, are they ministers of Christ? He said, I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons, more frequent. I actually entered prisons many times, in deaths often. Of the Jews, five times I received I, 40 stripes, save one. If you are the one, for the sake of Christ, they whoop you. They whoop you, 40 stripes. <laughs> and I'm not you now. A normal Christian, a spiritually immature Christian, whooped seven time, uh, 40 times. Tell me, what's going to happen to that? What do you think that person is going to do? He's gone. Forget it. If that's what it takes to follow Christ, I am done. I don't belong there. He said they whooped me 40 times, 40 stripes, save one. He said, thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeying often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. In weariness in, and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Yet Paul continued steadfastly in faith. You will continue steadfastly in faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I wrap up with point number three, unusual manifestations of spiritual maturity. First Corinthians 2.13 says, which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him that we have the mind of Christ. Spiritually matured Christians enjoy the privilege of divine revelation. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call unto me. Call unto me. Call unto me. I didn't hear you very well. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. And show thee what? Great and mighty things which thou divine revelation. We say divine revelation. It's meant for people who are spiritually matured. It is where there's divine revelation that you can recover all like David did. It's where there's divine revelation that you can attain the heights of God and the death that God wants you to attain. No wonder, no wonder. Everybody said, no wonder. Paul and Silas. They prayed, they sang. The Holy Ghost came down. Acts 26, or 16, verse 25. Acts 
16, we end with that passage. Acts 16, 25. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Make sure you're turning there because there's a breakthrough waiting for you. Acts 16, verse 25. Acts 16, 25. I read, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And what happened? And the prisoners did what? Heard them. Verse 26, everybody. And suddenly, everybody says suddenly. There was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison did what? Were shaking. And immediately all the doors were? All the doors were? Are there doors that are going to be open to you? Certainly. Everybody says certainly. They are going to be open. All the doors were open and every one's bands were? Lose. Verse 27, everybody. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself. And so, of course, supposing that the prisoners had fled, but they fled, but they told him not to do what? That is what you're going to do to your enemies. Don't kill yourself. Don't worry. God is just walking. They will be so embarrassed that you are feasting on the same table with them. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence. We can eat together and talk about God. Let's eat together and talk about the beauty of God. Let's eat together and talk about the glory of God. Paul and Silas. Rise up on your feet. They prayed. They sang. Oh, Paul and Silas. Choristers, help us. They sang, Holy Ghost came down, Paul and Silas. They sang, the Holy Ghost came down, oh Paul and Silas. Say, sing like you believe it. They sang, the Holy Ghost came down, oh Paul and Silas. They sang. The Holy Ghost came down. Oh, Paul and Silas. Hallelujah. They sang. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost came down. I say, Paul and Silas. Hallelujah. They sang. The Holy Ghost came down. Oh, Paul and Silas. Now I'm praying. Oh, now I'm singing. The Holy Ghost came down. Oh, Paul and Silas. Oh, I am praying. Oh, I'm also singing. The Holy Ghost came down. I say, Paul and Silas. Hallelujah. They sang. The Holy Ghost. Oh, what about you? I am praying. Oh, I am singing. The Holy Ghost will come down. Oh, what about you? Yeah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost will come down. Oh, what about you? What about you? Oh, what about you? The Holy Oh, what about you? Oh, what about you? Oh, what about you? The Holy Ghost will come down. Oh, Paul and Silas. Oh, what about you? Oh, what about you? The Holy Ghost will come down. Now open your mouth and begin to bless God. Open your mouth and begin to bless God. Open your mouth and begin to bless God here today. Open your mouth and begin to bless God. You're here, you've not started your Christian walk with God. You can't talk of maturity. If you don't have Jesus in your life as your Lord and Savior, then you can't talk of maturity. And maybe you're here, you've backslidden. God is calling you back like he called Peter. Come back home. Jesus is saying, come back home. Come and let us reason together. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, O oh God, for the things I've done to you. 
I'm sorry, Lord, for the things that I put you through. You died for me on the cross of Calvary. I'm sorry for crucifying you again by my negligence and sins. I'm sorry, O oh God, for being wayward, O oh Lord. I'm sorry, O oh God, for being spiritually insensitive, O oh God. I'm sorry, O oh God, for being, O oh Lord, spiritually insensitive to the needs of people. Tell the Lord you're sorry. I'm sorry for being weak when I'm supposed to be strong. I am sorry, O oh God, for not defending peace, O oh God. I am sorry, O oh God, for not, O oh God, being positive under pressure and pain and plenty. And I repent in dust and ashes. And I ask you to say for my people that are called by my name, the problem is not that God cannot move. God can save. God can move. God has enormous power at his disposal. He is the almighty God. Nothing is too difficult for him to do. But we are the problem. We are the issues right here. And we must say, Lord God, I repent in dust and ashes here this morning. I'm asking, oh God, that you forgive me for my negligence and trespasses, oh God, this morning. I'm asking, oh God, that you will have mercy upon me, oh God, for the compromises this morning. I'm asking, oh God, that you will forgive me for my foolishness, oh God, this morning. I'm asking, oh God, that Lord, for the impatience in my life this morning. Areas, oh God, I'm not taking wise decisions, oh God. I repent of them, oh Lord. Lord God, forgive us. I pray for myself that you have mercy, oh God, upon me. You have mercy upon me, oh God. For mercy prevails over judgment, oh God. You have mercy upon us, oh God, as a church. You have mercy upon our family, oh God, here this morning. For mercy prevails over judgment. For the fact that we can see November, oh God, of the 2018 is because of the mercy of the Lord that we are not consumed, oh God. For the fact that, Lord, we are still here alive, it's not because we're better than people who are out there. But it's because of your mercy, oh God, that we are alive here this morning. Lord, it's because, oh Lord, you love, it's not because of our own merit that you've blessed us so much on every side. It's not because, oh God, of our smartness and intelligence that you have blessed us on every side. We worship you here this morning, oh God. We adore you here this morning, oh God. It's a privilege to serve you, oh God. It's a privilege to speak to your people here, oh God, this morning. We, oh God, it's a privilege to be speaking to your people here this morning, oh God. And Lord, I acknowledge the privilege, oh God, this morning. And Lord God, it's a privilege, oh God, for us to be in the sanctuary where God is here this morning. It's a privilege to us to be in the sanctuary where God is here this morning. And the Spirit of the Most High God is here this morning. And Lord God, we cry, our Father here this morning, oh God. You say, for your Holy Spirit, take the deep things that belong to God and gives it to us, oh God, this morning. And Lord God, even though we don't deserve it, you are doing something, oh God, in our midst here this day. You're working out a miracle here this day. But Lord, we all understand that we must be matured, oh God. We must walk more with you, oh God. We must be more prayerful, oh God. We must, oh God, be more alive spiritually, oh God. We, oh Lord, we ask you this morning that you will have mercy upon us this morning. We we'll worship you, oh God. We exalt your holy name. We will continue in the faith. We'll be steadfast in the faith. Paul said, I've been through many stripes, many prisons, many afflictions, yet I continue in the faith. I am not going back to the world. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, oh God. No turning back, oh God. Our character is, is known even when we are on our own, oh God. Pastor may not be there. My parents may not be there. My friends may not be there. But Lord God, I know and I acknowledge that you are with me. Even unto the ends of the world, oh God. And I am going to stand by God. And I'm going to walk with God. I'm not just going to talk the talk of faith. But I'm going to walk the walk of faith. Oh my Lord, my God Almighty. I'm going to walk the walk of faith. Lord, it may not be interesting. But I'm going to walk the walk of faith. Because glory awaits me, oh God. I bless you here this morning, O oh God. Worship you, O oh God. I exalt your holy name. I give myself away. Chorus is help me. I give myself away so you 
can never rise above its level we will never rise above what we are father we pray this morning oh god in the mighty name of jesus that you break us except we be broken oh god except we die like you said except the corn of wheat be dead it cannot produce life father oh god every carnality within us we pray dead in the name of Jesus Christ. Every stubbornness, resistance to the word of God within us, Father, we ask that you crush them this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray, oh God, this morning, anything in our lives, oh God, any tree that you have not planted, oh God, may have been for so long in us, and Lord is inimical to our spiritual maturity, O oh God. We pray that by your power you approve them this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. We give ourselves away that you may use us. If you can use anything, you can use us. We are the, oh God, the clay, and you are the potter. We can ask you questions, O oh God. We can't, oh God, interrogate you on what you want to do through us. Why, Father, we surrender ourselves to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Unto you, Jesus, we surrender all. Our wills we surrender, O oh God. Our ways we surrender, O oh God. Our talents we surrender, O oh God. Our time we surrender, O oh God. We are none of ours. We pray, Father, you would take, oh God, this effing clay and vessel that is here. Take, oh God, take us, oh God, as we are. And do that which you want to do through us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For we know, God, at the end of the day that there will be beauty for ashes, oh God. Oh God, there will be beauty for ashes, oh God. Oh God, we know there will be a transformation, oh God. Oh God, we know that there will be, oh God, a turnaround, oh God. Oh God, where there's desolation, oh God, Father Hefziba will become our name, oh God. Beauty in the mighty name of Jesus. Beauty for ashes this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Every ruins of our lives, oh God, are going to be rebuilt by your mighty power. Father, every raggedness of our hearts, of our lives will be rebuilt by your mighty power. We may be nobody right now, but we know we're becoming somebody. Because you're going to make us somebody in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. From glory to glory. From anointing to anointing. Our lives should not remain the same, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We're careless of what the enemy is going to do. We're careless of what is maybe ahead of us. 
we will be steadfast. Oh, continue in the faith. We're not going back to the world. We are going forward. We are going forward. We are going forward. Like our pastor said, every no, like November sounds, every no that has been our portion shall become yes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every closed door. When Paul and Silas prayed, the prison door was open. Father, Lord God, let me a liberation in the house here this morning. Even if you're here, you were confirmed. Your destiny was confirmed dead. I speak to you the word of life this morning. As Lazarus came forth, you are coming forth. You are coming forth. You are coming forth in the mighty name of Jesus. We lose your destiny this morning. We lose your career this morning. We lose your blessings this morning. From failure, you're moving to success. From defeat, you're moving to victory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything is coming together again for you. Everything is coming together again for you. I speak to the north. I speak to the south. I speak to the west and east. You have scattered these people for so long. Give up. Give up. Give up. In the name of Jesus. Give up their blessings right now. In the name of Jesus. You're here. Nothing seems to be connecting within. From today, you begin to experience inner victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the Bible says, a man thinketh in the heart, so is he. From today, you are a champion. From today, you are a victor. From today, you are victoria. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father.